Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, we got some really awesome updates to help with performance of the ROG Xbox Ally X and the other allies across the board. I was going to make a video a few days ago, but I'm actually glad that I waited because we got more updates. Now, first up, Asus updated Armory Crate with some cool features that I want to show off. Uh, the ability to kind of disable some performance and efficiency cores on the Z2 Extreme, which will help out with performance or battery life, depending on how you work it out. But the other update is pretty major here, and it's coming directly from Xbox. It's going to allow us to get better performance in these games. And what they've done here is created optimized performance profiles per game. At the time of making this, it's not working with every game. They've got about 40 games uh, when this video goes live, but it's pretty cool. And here's Silk Song. So at the top, through Armory Crate, you can see I've got that optimized performance profile turned on. And basically, this is like auto TDP. It's going to adjust that TDP up or down depending on what kind of frame rate we want to get, allowing us to get a super smooth experience. And I do think a lot of people out there are going to utilize this because it's just going to allow you to start that game up and play it at a really nice frame rate without having to worry about adjusting things in the background. It's going to handle that TDP control for us. It can help out with battery life if it's set up correctly, but it's really made to keep that performance up on your game and with what they have right now it does work really well xbox will be adding more games to the optimized library so uh, definitely keep an eye out but let's go ahead and jump into it i want to show these features off because i do think they're really awesome so like i mentioned there's two major updates here that i wanted to take a look at in this video and the first one being the new armory crate sc and we recently got some really good updates here this is Armory Crate SE 2.1.15.0. It's going to work on the Ally, the Ally X, the ROG Xbox Ally, and of course the ROG Xbox Ally X. Now there's a feature here that only works with the ROG Xbox Ally X, and that's the one that I was most excited about. And that's going to be this one right here. They've added CPU, P-Core, and E-Core options under Performance in Armory Crate SE. So basically, with the Z2 Extreme, we've got three performance cores and five efficiency cores, so Zen 5 cores and Zen 5C cores. From here, we can disable and enable more. Not a lot of people are going to use this, but I did want to show it off because it can help out with performance. They've added the option to enter and exit full screen experience using key bindings, so you can set up your own key now. Added an update notification feature in the command center. They've integrated the AMD Radeon Chill behavior into the FPS limiter function. Adjusted FPS limiter option from 45 down to 40. Just going to better go right along with, you know, the frame rates that we can get out of this variable refresh rate display up to 120 hertz. Changed the bottom bar. Added Windows Power Mode option uh, for manual operating modes. And that's really great in the performance section. There's some other stuff here, and I'll leave a link for this in the description in case you want to check out the full change log. The next new update is a pretty big one, and it's actually coming to us from Xbox and Microsoft. Default game profiles are now available in preview. This is going to be really awesome for a lot of people out there. And basically, what this is going to allow us to do is set up a default game profile from Armory Crane. This is going to be tailored per game from Microsoft or Xbox. I guess they got a team working on this. And it's going to set up our power profile to work correctly with a game. And at the time of making this video, there's 40 supported games. And uh, I'll tell you, this does work out pretty well. Basically, if the game falls short of the target FPS, the game profile is designed to boost power to help reach that target FPS. You're going to trade a little bit of battery, but the game's not going to fall on its face. If the game is performing above the target FPS, the game profile is designed to limit FPS at the target rate to save power. So this is great, and uh, it's per game right now. Again, there's 40 of them. I've downloaded a few games that it supports, and right here we've got a little bit of a list. COD, Black Ops 6, Black Ops 7, Warzone, Doom Eternal, Doom the Dark Ages, Forza Horizon 5, Gears 5. But I think this is going to come in really handy for a lot of people who just want to get into a game and play it without it kind of falling on its face. This could definitely go a long way if they keep at it, and what they've got going on right now is working pretty well. But now I want to show some of these new features off. We're going to jump over to the ROG Xbox Ally X. The first thing I wanted to talk about was that Armory Crate update. And as we saw with the change log, I mean, there's a lot of changes here. But uh, the most exciting thing to me is in performance, from more settings, we can now choose how many performance cores and efficiency cores are enabled on the system. 
So with the Z2 Extreme, we have three performance cores and five efficiency cores. For the most part, a lot of people probably aren't going to mess around with this. But what I found was with some games, this actually does help out. Removing at least one performance core, one E core, will basically cut us down to a six core, 12 thread CPU. But with this, we've still got a lot of performance because we're based on Zen 5 with this, even though we've got the Zen 5C cores. And in turn, the extra power that was going to be used for those two extra cores there can be sent over to the iGPU, allowing for higher clocks over there. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, before we do that, I'll just show you. You can see we've got that Z2 Extreme here. Eight cores, 16 threads. With this, we do have to reboot the system if we take it down to, let's say, two performance cores and four efficiency cores. Now, I kind of wish they used the preferred method. Basically, it would park the cores that we don't want to use, but this is going to basically disable them from the system. So once I click apply, we're going to restart now. And now that I'm rebooted, if I go to my task manager, you can see we've still got that Ryzen Z2 Extreme. But now it's working as a 6 core, 12 thread CPU instead of 8 core, 16 threads. And we don't have to send as much power over to the CPU because we've got fewer cores and threads here, enabling higher iGPU clocks in AAA games. Now, this could also work by, you know, disabling all of the performance cores if you're just going to run indie games on something like this, get better battery life. But I'll show you a side by side comparison real quick. And to tell you the truth, I didn't think we'd see this much of a game. But overall, I mean, with both setups here, the game is very playable. On the left-hand side, we've got the 8 cores, 16 threads enabled. On the right-hand side, we've got 6 cores and 12 threads enabled. Both at an 18-watt TDP, 1080 high settings. And you can see over on the side where we disabled the cores, our iGPU clock is much higher. In some cases, up to around 400 megahertz higher. So it's actually able to send that power over there instead of using it for the extra cores. The next thing I wanted to talk about were the default game profiles, and I do think that this is a really good idea. So uh, with this update, like we saw on Xbox Wire, default game profiles are available for around 40 games at the time I'm making this. More will be on the way. And uh, one that I did want to test just to see if it would work was a Steam version of a game that's supported to see if it would work with the Steam version of the game. We'll do that in a second, but we're going to jump in here because I want to show you exactly what this is. Again, I do think that this is a really awesome idea and we'll go with, um, let's just do, we'll do Tony Hawk. Okay, so here we are with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4. And right now, I'm not using the default game profile. I'm actually in performance mode from Armory Crate. So if we open up our quick menu, you can see right here, we've got our operating modes. But at the top, we've got the default game profile. This is a preview from Xbox. So at 25 watts, we'll see uh, what we've got going on here. Now, this game does run really well on the Z2 Extreme, no matter which way you look at it. Obviously, we're trying to get up to like 120 with it. I'm not sure if we're going to hit that even with the default game profile. This is more of a 60 FPS game on something like this. But our TDP is up to around 25 watts, as you can see from Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner. So I'm going to stop here. And what I'm going to do is open this up, and we're going to enable the default game profile. Now, if I scroll down, you'll see that our FPS limiter is up to 120. I'm going to enable the default game profile and you can see that it's optimizing the FPS. It does look like it's going to drop it down to 60. I, I kind of mentioned that. I knew we'd uh, not be able to do this up to 120. And at 60 FPS, this game is really smooth on the uh, Ally X for sure. You see drop it down 59, 60. It's not something you'd notice while you're playing the game if you don't have the frame counter on. But what this is going to allow it to do is uh, just kind of stick at that 60. It's going to give it a little more power if it needs it in some circumstances. So if there's lots of particle effects on screen, it might take that TDP up. And you'll see it kind of fluctuate a bit. So we're at 13 watts right now. And I did see it jump up to around 16 here with this default game profile. But this is awesome. And hopefully it's added for a ton of different games. And one way I think we'll be able to tell if the game has a game profile is a little marker inside of the Xbox application. 
But yeah, this is really awesome. And it took it down to 60 FPS, but we're drawing considerably less power. And with this, we really don't have to worry about it dipping under that 60. You're going way under 60 at least. And I'll show you what I was talking about by having a little marker. Um, let's do, okay, Minecraft. I know that this one, this is the Minecraft for Windows version. Right up here, handheld optimized. Will perform great on your device. So if we go to something else that might not perform well, I'm not sure if this game will or not. Mostly compatible. So with something like that, let's do one more here. We'll find um, Hogwarts Legacy. Handheld optimized will perform great on your device. So I do think that, you know, we'll see this and we'll also have a game profile that we can use from within Armory Crate. This is just gonna help people, you know, get into the game and not have to tweak everything to get the game up and running really well. Before I do a little more testing with this, there was one last thing that I wanted to check out and I mentioned it, but I wanted to see if, let's say, the Steam version of Doom Eternal can be optimized. Over on the Xbox Wire with the announcement, it does state that Doom Eternal and Doom the Dark Ages is supported for the optimizations. But I'm not exactly sure if it's just going to be the Xbox version here, if it's going to detect it at all, or it'll work, you know, across the board. Because I've got this from Steam, and I can always download it through the Xbox application. But we'll start this up and see if it has it. And immediately, getting into the Steam version of Doom Eternal, once I press that Armory Crate button, you can see it's not here. But with the Xbox Game Pass version or the Xbox version, we would have that optimization because it is a supported game. So right now, it does look like it's only working with those uh, games that you get through the Xbox Store. But it would be nice if it could scan the metadata and, you know, allow us to use it on something from Steam. That would also be a really big plus for us. Overall, I'm really glad to see updates like this for the Ally line, and more will be on the way. I think uh, Xbox has really been pushing the handheld thing since the uh, ROG Xbox Ally X and the uh, Xbox Ally launched. I can't wait for more, and I really thought this was worth making a video. So if you've got an ROG Xbox Ally or even a regular Ally, you can definitely give this a try in the big screen experience mode. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Again, I'll leave links to that Armory Crate change log and the Xbox Hub so you can check out all of the new fixes and changes from Xbox with the full screen experience. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.